Hey, please stop saying EMD is consideration. That is not true. Not at all. EMD is very often confused with consideration, and they're not the same thing. Consideration is a legal term uh, referring to the value exchange between parties. It's the documented promise to pay. That's the consideration. The consideration is the exchange of value for value, dollars for an asset, labor for an asset, whatever. The contract documents what the consideration is. Earnest money deposit is a completely separate thing, period, end of story. A valid contract should be presumed to exist even when earnest money is not made. How about that? You have to have something exchanged for something in a contract. That's a two-way engagement. And typically, in a real estate contract, it is the promise to pay. It's a documented promise to pay that is the actual consideration. I will give you $600,000 in exchange for that asset. Well, $600,000 is the consideration. That's what makes the contract is that it is actually promising one thing in exchange for the other. Earnest money is just a deposit toward that transaction. It is a, a way for the other party to feel safe in that if you f don't fulfill your obligations prior to the close of escrow, that they will get to keep something. But it does not have to be a dollar. It doesn't have to be a thousand dollars. It doesn't have to be any dollars at all. Earnest money deposit is not at all required. Now, if it's documented in the contract that it's required, if it says EMD shall be blank and you put one dollar in and it shall be delivered on or before X, then you got to do it. Otherwise, you're in default of the contract. But if you don't state EMD, you don't have to put it in. Or if you put a zero in the blank, you don't have to pay anything. I know people who put $1. I know people who put 1%. I know people who put zero. They're not at all required in order to validate a transaction. Court cases have upheld this, that the earnest money is a completely separate aspect of the transaction. So let me read off to you a little bit of the internet. This is an excerpt on uh, California law. Having no, earn having no earnest money, it does not make any real estate purchase agreement unenforceable in a court of law. Now, I'm reading about California, but this is generally true across the board. The four essential elements are parties capable of contracting. You have to be mentally sound. They have to be able to contract. They have to give consent. It can't be coerced. Three, a lawful object. And four, a sufficient cause or consideration. A deposit has nothing to do with those four things. However, both parties do have to provide consideration, which is something I haven't mentioned yet. Consideration is a two-way street. The asset for value. This and this are consideration. The consideration has to be a two-way. This asset for this money. And from another place on the internet, there's a case, uh, Kirstein Development Company versus Garenson Investment. Consideration may take many forms. In fact, it's funny because I gave the example of $600,000 for a house. Well, here you go. The buyer promised to pay $600,000 in exchange for the seller's promise to transfer the property. This was the real consideration in the contract, as stated by the Iowa Supreme Court. So the Iowa Supreme Court specifically declined to explore the issue as to whether the waiver of the earnest money deposit had occurred by holding that a failure to pay a $100 earnest money out of a $600,000 purchase could not constitute a total failure of consideration. So in this case, the seller's final contention was that the written offer was too incomplete as a matter of law, to even constitute an enforceable contract. However, the Iowa Supreme Court agreed with the Court of Appeals that the record contains sufficient evidence to generate a jury issue on that claim. In summary here, because modern real estate practice normally dictates that only a nominal earnest money deposit be made by the buyers and the purchase agreement contains no automatic cancellation, which was a separate issue, then it, since there's no automatic cancellation as a remedy, a valid contract should be presumed to exist even when earnest money is not made. How about that? So get this as I read about the significance of EMD or insignificance of EMD. The question being, what is the legal effect of the buyer's failure to pay the earnest money deposit, if there even is one, right? Unless the purchase agreement contains some sort of automatic cancellation for not depositing EMD within X days that automatically voids the contract for failure to pay that, then there is a valid contract. In fact, there is a valid contract 
until the buyer fails to deposit on or before that deadline, as long as the contract states that it automatically voids itself for failure to receive EMD. However, if that's not in there, there is still a legally binding contract for the sale of the property with the buyers and sellers both being bound to perform uh, in accordance with the terms of that purchase agreement. The sellers, in fact, are not at liberty to even accept subsequent offers without that acceptance being conditioned upon the termination of the first offer. You can't just go take the next offer. You can't do that. You have to indicate that there is an offer right here. We're currently in the middle of a default situation. We've got to sort it out. Defaulting does not automatically cancel a contract unless it's a declared specific circumstance that also carries with it a remedy, defined remedy of automatic cancellation. If you go 72 hours without depositing earnest money, the contract is canceled. That is the only way that failure to bring earnest money is going to kill a deal. If this condition is met, this automatically cancels. Please stop calling earnest money consideration. Are we on the same page? Earnest money is not consideration. The promise to pay in two directions is the consideration. I promise to give my house to you. That's my consideration to you. You promise to give dollars to me. That's your consideration to me. If we document that on a napkin, we have a legally valid and legally binding contract with or without EMD. Share this with somebody who needs to know it. Bookmark this because you're going to run into it. People keep, this is one of those issues that keeps coming up. Let's train each other up to excellence.